Discrete random variables. This very big, heavy phrase, right? What do we mean by each of these three terms? Hopefully, we've been looking at enough time now that even if you don't have like a technical definition for it, you could explain what each of these bits mean. Let's start with the last one. It's the easiest one. When we say variable, why do we say that? Say that again, sorry. OK, so we have some numbers we want to measure. We put the variable in place of the number, mainly because the number can change, right? Variable, it can vary. Uh, what do we mean? Random, this one does have a very specific meaning, and it's not the one we usually, when we're like, whoa, how random. That's not what this random means. What does this random mean? Anyone want to suggest? Yeah, Will? If it's random, it's like multiple outcomes without a bias. Ah, very good. So multiple outcomes, I think the key part of it is the without bias part, right? So if you've got like a loaded die, Okay, or you're talking to people and they're more likely to give one answer than another, then it is not truly random. Okay? So that's what we mean by that. All options are equally likely, except for um, whatever the probability density function tells us. And we'll have a look at that in a second. Last one, weirdest one, discrete. What's it mean? Discrete. discrete. So mainly, it's, it's whole numbers, things that are separate. Okay? By the way, uh, not to be confused with discrete that has a double E. Does anyone know what that means? Yeah, like, shh, do it discreetly, right? So people don't know, okay? Uh, different spelling, same pronunciation, completely different words. All right, so let's have a look at 20. You've got that graph in front of you, and it shows a discrete probability distribution. So have a look at the bottom axis of the graph for me, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So these things cannot mix. If it wasn't a discrete random variable, what kind of random variable would it be if all of the things mixed together? Very good. Continuous is the opposite of discrete. Okay, so we want to calculate the expected value of this distribution. So we've got twenty, part A. Let's just remember, <coughs> what's the like fancy way of saying the calculation for this? We use this weird Greek letter. Does anyone remember which one it was? Sigma. The sigma. Very good. Um, we use the sigma because the Greek letter sigma is equivalent to our S. S stands for what? Sum. Sum. Very good. You're adding up a bunch of things. What are we adding up? To work out expected value, what are we adding up? There's two pieces that go into this. And remember? Yeah, go ahead, sorry. In this example, it's just the x values okay. and the y values. Yeah, very good. So the x values, and we usually write them like so, like the i is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So these are the x values. Now the y values, just have a look, right? What are the y values here? It's actually not labeled a y axis. We usually call it y, but what is it in this case? Okay, yeah, probability, P of X, right? So that's going to be the probability of that particular score turning up. There's one thing missing from my sigma notation. Can anyone tell me what it is? It's actually at the beginning. When you see this, do you remember? Um, when you say the sum of a bunch of things, right, you actually have to specify, like, where do you start and where do you end, okay? You would have to specify I equals, we usually start from zero, and then in this case, how many scores are there? There's one, two, three, four of them. So I'd go from 0 up to 4. This is not to be confused with, like, what these x values are, are not 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. What, what are the values that are relevant for me? Have a look. 2, 3, 4, and 5. Very good. So that's what these numbers are going to be. Let's go ahead and actually do this. So we're going to have our four different products here. So the first one, you told me it was 2. What am I going to multiply it by? Thank you. It's probability, 0 0.1. And then I'm going to add that to, do this again, for every single one of them along, okay? So I've got three, is it 0 0.2? They just go up in steps, don't they? Okay, so that's kind of convenient for us. And now is a good time, if you haven't already, to reach for your calculator, because we're going to go ahead and calculate what this expected value is. I'll give you a sec to get to there. Or has anyone already got it? I, I think I calculated for beforehand. Um, so please go ahead, you've got to make sure you do this, right? Um, but you should get 4 once you've got that, right? So this is the expected value. Now, remember it because we're going to turn the page and use this to answer the next question. So have a look over, and I'm just going to suggest if there's two of you who can see this, maybe one person turn their page, the other person stay on the original page because we'll also need that. Um, part B, what does it ask? It's a bit of a mouthful. Would you expect the median to be greater than, less than, or equal to the expected value of this distribution. Okay, there's a lot there, right? Um, put up your hand if, and if no one puts up their hands, that's fine, but I just want to know. Put up your hand if you could say, I know how to find the median, that's the first thing you're asking for, in this distribution. Any takers? 
Yeah, that's it. I just, I'm not going to ask you, I just want an indication. All right, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Let's all try and work out how this uh, is calculated. What, what is median? Right, this is part B. It's the middle, middle number, the middle value, right? So what we're looking for is where does the median occur? Now, it's a bit tricky when you've got a probability distribution because normally we would say something like uh, there's five people, right? And you want to say, okay, which one it has the median height? So what would you do? You'd arrange them... Let's give them a tall haircut. You'd arrange them somewhat. This guy just has a big head, that's why they're taller. Um, you'd arrange them in height order, right? And then you just say, which one's the middle one? Okay. Now have a look at this probability graph. There's no like bunch of people or bunch of items and then you can just count along, right? All we've got is probabilities, okay? But we can work this out nonetheless by calculating and um, where you've got part B written there. Can I ask you to write down the phrase cumulative, cumulative, Probability. So um, this is very similar to cumulative frequency. If you remember calculating that all the way back in like year seven and eight, what we're going to do is we're going to add up the probabilities and let them accumulate as we go further along. Okay. So draw me a little table, and on our table we will need uh, one, two, three columns. They don't need to be huge though. Three columns. The first column is going to be our particular x values. Now, you already told me what they were. Uh, they are 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. In this table, we're also going to have the probability of those x values. So I'll just write p for probability. And um, we have that written now in our expected value calculation. Yeah, so it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on. Okay. Now this last one is the cumulative probability. So just like with cumulative frequency, we're just going to add everything as we progress down the table. So for the first row, I only have one probability to add. It's there 0 0.1, okay? As I write the next one, I'm including all of the probabilities before. So it's 0 0.2 and all the previous ones. So what will the cumulative probability be here? 0 0.3, that's it. Now, at this point, I'm going to add my next probability and all the previous ones. So 0 0.6, very good. And then the last one gives me 1, which it should. Why is that? It's, it's, what does 1 mean in this context? Yeah, it better add up to 1. That means I've got a comprehensive list of all the things that could possibly happen. The total probability is one if I add everything up together. Okay, so there's the end of our table. Now, how do we use this? The median is supposed to come, like you told me, halfway, like in the middle, right? So what would the middle probability be? It'd be zero point, hmm, think carefully. Like halfway through, like the position would be 0 0.5 the way through. Does that make sense? If the, if, the final, if the final person is one, the final person is one, then the middle person should be 0 0.5. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because it's discrete, I have to go up in steps, right? So let me ask, humor me, okay? By this value, have I gotten to 0 0.5 yet? No, no, I haven't. By this value, have I gotten to 0 0.5 yet? No, I haven't. But once I cross into here, somewhere in here, I get to 0 0.5. In fact, I go past it, don't I? Okay, so this value here, this is the median, okay? It's wherever... What's the first moment, the first instant, that you pass that 0 0.5 threshold? Might be worth jotting that down. It's um, when we pass the cumulative probability being 0 0.5. Um, it's a bit weird that it isn't exactly 0 0.5. You're like, it's not this one and it's not that one. The whole point of discrete random variables is that you can't say it's in between. You're one or the other, okay? Because you haven't gotten to it here, it only happens on the next one. Can we use this to answer our question? Look back at the question, it's a bit of a mouthful, right? It says, oh, I actually have the book here. <clears throat> Oops, where'd it go? Would you expect the median to be greater than, less than, or equal to the expected value? What's our answer? It is exactly equal to. We worked out expected value here, and then here's our median, okay? So, so far, so good. You can say, you can write down if you like, um, it is equal. It is equal.